like clock. I can't stop. Fuck around, make my 40 pop. No pop con. I pop pistols. Reaping my body. Clothing, no issue. Bitch, you look sick. You need a tissue. You drop a body. I just might bless you. I'm at your session. What is going on, guys? It's Wraith here, back with another video. Now, in today's video, I'm going to be talking about how to take your game from where you are now to actually the next level which could be kind of meaning a lot of things it could be if you're just an average player how to take it to a more in-depth player do better in tournaments and if you're actually a very very good player and finish well in tournaments how to actually maybe even get to that pro level that you've been grasping for for so long so yeah hopefully this video will help a lot of you guys out if you're looking forward to that make sure you smash the like button make sure you hit that subscribe button and you already know it make sure you use creator code wraith fn in the item shop now let's get into it so the first thing I'm going to talk about today is watching players better than you. And now most of that time it means pro players. And now the reason I'm telling you guys to do this, and I'm sure a lot of you guys already watch Twitch or a lot of you guys already watch whoever, Tifu, Mongo, whoever it is, right? It's very, very important to watch them in depth. Don't just watch them for their personalities or watch them because they're hilarious or whatever the reason is. Watch them to actually like improve at the game. What are they doing every single time they box? What are they doing every single time someone has height on them? What are they doing every single time they have no mobility? Are they pushing someone? Where do they go in a circle like when it's rotating zones, etc, etc, etc. There's so much things you can learn from the pro, pro players that you may not do in your game. Sure, you may do a lot of what they do, but if you can even add a little, th a couple little things that they do in their game and add into your game, you're just going to improve so much more, whether you're a very average player, whether you're a very good player. The more you watch pro players, the more you learn from them, the better you're going to be. Like They're a pro player for a reason, right? That's why you can improve from them. Now tip number two, now this one obviously a lot of people aren't going to be able to do, but for those of you who can and for those of you who are not working who are in high school or whatever the reason is, try and put more time into the game and practicing. Now obviously like I said, this kind of depends on who you are. If you're working a 9 to 5 or whatever, you can only play for 5 till 10, well then try your best and put in as much hours of good practice, not bad practice into the game. But if you're just a high school student or even if you do streaming full time and you're playing for three hours and you feel a little bit bored, so you go play Netflix or you go watch Netflix or you go play COD for a little bit, no offense, but you're probably not going to get to the level where you want to be, right? So if you have the time and you aren't really doing anything else, if you really want to improve, put the time into Fortnite. Now, obviously, if you don't want to improve, you just want to play the game for fun, you want to be just be an okay player maybe a little bit of better okay player that's fine don't worry about that then this video is probably not for you but if you are actually trying to improve and get to the next level again whether you're average going to good or pro or good going to pro put in more time the pro players are putting in 10 to 15 hours a day yeah 10 to 15 hours a day just getting better now obviously this is their job but if you want to improve that much then you got to be putting in as much time as you possibly can now tip number three is advance your practice routines and advance your practicing. So now what I mean about that is if you're just going through the same motions over and over while warming up or practicing like you're just doing a simple edit or you're doing the easiest edit course or whatever it is, you're probably not going to be improving as fast as you should be. If you're challenging yourself and doing crazy edit courses, crazy aim courses, crazy flick shots that you need to practice, whatever it is, crazy builds, it's going to make you better because you, it's going to make you better because you're actually like going somewhere where you've never been before. For example, the mongrel edit where I said how to improve on editing when he does the ramp walls to the left and behind it and then the floor pyramid and he edits through all of that. Absolutely incredible. Only a few players in the world can do that. But if you're trying to do that, at least you're going out of your comfort zone. You're trying something new. And the more you do it, the more comfortable you're going to feel, the more comfortable you're going to be feeling going out of your comfort zone, etc., etc. And again, if you're just going through a normal aim aim trainer eventually after like 10 15 times of doing it or not 10 15 times maybe 50 to 50 to 100 times of doing it you got that kind of down switch to something that's more challenging for you are you struggling with tracking then go to track and aiming course etc etc now number four is nail down what you're struggling with so what is it that you think actually makes you okay or very good at the game and what do you think you can improve on to get to that next level and that kind of ties in with watching the pro players watch what you do that they don't or watch what they do that you don't and kind of figure that out so obviously if you're doing something very specific like 
I don't know, you're outbuilding the player, but then you miss your shots when you're on high ground and you get, become overconfident. Well, then work on not becoming overconfident. Work on being treating every single one like it's a pro player and work on your aim if you're missing your shots, etc., etc. Figure out what part of you isn't where you want to be. Like, what is it? Your aim? What is it? Your building? Your editing? Your IQ? What is it? Figure out what that is and try and nail that down and get that because if you improve on the worst part of your game, then your overall gameplay is going to go up tremendously, right? It's very, very important to figure out what you're weak at and how you can actually improve at it. Now, kind of a, this kind of ties in the next one, but this is also a big tip for actually figuring out what your worst thing is, is ask your friends or the people you play with what what's wrong with you. Now, I don't mean that like what's wrong with you as a person. I mean, what's wrong with your gameplay? I know when I felt like I plateaued at Fortnite and I wasn't getting any better, I was asked two of my buddies who were probably a little bit better at me at the time. And I was like, look, I feel like I plateaued. I feel like I can't get any better no matter how much time I practice. What do you guys think I need to practice more? One of them said, your comms are average. They're not very good. Like, you'll make the odd call out. You'll miss the call out. Whatever it is, right? They're very average. So what did I do? I went and worked out, worked on my comms as much as possible. Now my comms are pretty good. I call it every single thing that's important, not things that aren't important. And I feel like they're way better overall in the long run. Now, obviously, if your friends point aren't very good or you don't have many people you play with, you can't really do that, which is okay then you just got to kind of self critique and figure out what you're doing wrong now obviously it's better to ask someone better than you but it's also okay to ask someone who's just as good as you or even a little bit under you as long as they understand the game as a core they can figure out what's the worst part of your game so for example they're like well you're pretty good in solos from like what i've heard from you you have a good amount of solo wins whatever right but when you play duos like you always seem to struggle because you can't handle two people well, if that's the case and start playing solo squads or start playing solo duos and practice with that right it's very very important to figure out what's wrong with your gameplay and improve it now it's one thing to look at yourself and self critique a lot of people when they self critique don't see the big picture and don't actually notice what their big thing is because either their egos in the way or they just don't notice it but when you ask someone else's opinion then you can have a whole new way of looking at things and they have a whole different set of skills looking towards your gameplay and like okay well this is what you need to fix another thing you can do is even ask your real life buddies if you have any who play fortnite who are decent clip a vod review and instead of just watching on your own watch it with your friend ask them if you can come over for an hour two hours and be like hey can you tell me what you think is wrong with this gameplay and they'll be like sure why not if not again you can always upload it to youtube and send it to your friends who you play with and they can maybe critique it as well now the last thing i'm going to talk about and this is kind of a controversial thing. I feel like a lot of you guys are not, not going to say this can actually make you improve, but I think it does. And it's upgrading your setup. Now, this is kind of a hard topic to discuss because obviously there's scenarios where maybe you're like 13 or 14 or you don't have a job or you don't have the income to actually buy a new setup, whatever the reason is. But I'm talking about if you can and you're able to, obviously don't spend the last money or dollars buying a PC or whatever the reason is. If you have the money and you actually want to get better, I suggest putting a little bit and investing a little bit into Fortnite. So for example, if you're a controller player on console, you're playing keyboard and mouse on console, maybe it's time when you have enough money saved over from working a job or whatever the reason is, maybe you ask for it for Christmas, get a new PC, get a brand new PC, trust me, Pop your frames up from 60 to 240 or even 160. It'll improve so much. If you have a PC but you only have a 60 hertz monitor, maybe pop up to 144 hertz. Sure, it might cost $200 more, but if you're really dedicated to improving your player and your style of gameplay, it's definitely worth it. Again, if you're on controller and you play PC already, but you have a 144 hertz monitor, maybe look into a 240 hertz monitor, maybe look into a scuff controller, whatever works the best for you. For example, another one, if you're keyboard and mouse and you just have a normal average keyboard or an average like Logitech G402 mouse, Maybe switch to Ninja Final Mouse. Put a little bit more money in if that thing. If you think that'll make you improve as a player, do it now. Obviously, if you like, I said, if you don't have the income, don't do it. Only do it if you have a little extra money to spare or someone's buying it for you as a gift. I do not recommend going all out into Fortnite because it's not really a guarantee. But if you feel like you really want to get to that next level, I highly suggest upgrading your setup. Now, obviously, having a 240Hz monitor, having a 240FPS PC, having the Ninja Final Mouse scuff controller, whatever it is, isn't going to make you the best player in the world, but it definitely will give you more advantages over other players. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you smash the like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. 
Use creator code WraithFN in the item shop, and I'll see you guys all in the next one. Have a good one, guys.